It's one of the most repressive states in the Middle East. Yet even Syria hasn't managed to completely suppress the calls for freedom that are sweeping the region. Posted online, this footage is purportedly from the city of Dera. Al Jazeera cannot independently verify the contents of the video. It shows water cannon being used to disperse a group of demonstrators. One witness claimed three people were shot dead by security forces. Syrian state television acknowledged there had been disturbances in Dera, saying infiltrators had caused chaos and riots. In the capital, Damascus, a dozen protesters dared to call for freedoms at the main mosque. Witnesses say they were forcefully dispersed by plainclothes police. Then, as well as Dera, there were demonstrations in Homs and Banias. This gathering in Banias was, like elsewhere, held after Friday prayers. The crowd is chanting God, Syria and freedom. Again, Al Jazeera cannot independently verify this video. For nearly 50 years, Syria has been ruled under emergency laws by President Bashar al-Assad's Ba'ath Party. But, like elsewhere in the region, it has a young, technology-savvy population that is one step ahead of the state security apparatus. Bernard Smith, Al Jazeera.
يا شعب بيد ومسامن حان الهال حر يحان In this video taken inside an interrogation room, a teenage boy is seen cowering in a corner, then forced to kiss the foot of his torturer, then badly beaten. But who could have gotten into an interrogation room with a camera? Osama says that the soldiers filmed these scenes themselves, then put them on the internet as a warning. Stop protesting or else. When you are beating a young boy, you are telling everybody that if you want freedom, if you will demonstrate, you will be in his place in the next sequence. For two and a half years she filmed, capturing the terror experienced by Syrians every day. And not just the people. The film showed the lengths to which Syrians went to defy the snipers and leave no man behind. When children didn't show up for class, she knew what it meant. Yasin and Maryam. Maryam and Yasin. Shells come in every few seconds. It's not a battle. Baba Amma has no heavy weapons. Shelling's been going on here all morning now. And what you hear over and over again from the people is that they feel abandoned by the outside world. The makeshift clinics are overwhelmed. There are no supplies and few doctors. People come here because they're afraid of arrest at a state hospital. Even here, many hide their faces, terrified the regime will hunt them down. People here had hoped the UN would protect them. But that morning, Russia and China vetoed a resolution to help. They're angry at their Arab neighbours too. Why aren't they helping? The people here are afraid the regime believes it has a free hand to do whatever it wants. Undoubtedly, most of the victims are civilians, many children. Wrapped in the shroud is a seven-year-old girl killed in the shelling. The attendant carefully writes her name, Hanadi. He's done this for four members of his own family, too. Hanadi must be buried at night. Daytime is too dangerous. Even now, even here, they are attacked. There's no family, no prayers, and little dignity. One of them addresses President Assad directly. This group walked for three days to avoid the soldiers. They're terrified of what government forces are doing. Now they're back in control. <coughs> Whoever they catch on a checkpoint is dead. Dead. They took our boys and men. They took the boys from the houses and the men at the checkpoints. 
Everywhere we go, we meet groups of women and children without men. The Ibrahim family tell me they witnessed a massacre. Dozens of men and boys were seized, they say, killed in the street, four of their own family, including a 12-year-old boy. We have been very clear to the Assad regime, but also to other players on the ground that a red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. This morning, Syrian rebels tell us there was a series of what they claim were chemical weapons attacks. Ten villages at least to the east and north of Damascus hit by what rebels say were surface-to-surface -surface missiles fired by the regime and tipped with chemical weapons. The death toll, well over 1,000. Symptoms before death, witnesses tell us, were shortness of breath, constricted pupils, foaming at the mouth. We've seen videos posted online showing many women and children among the dead. But this still photo captures a sliver of the horror. Syrian citizens trying to identify the dead bodies of children in the town of Arbin in Damascus. You blurred the faces in this picture. More amateur video captures smoke rising in the aftermath of the bombings. Meanwhile, the stance of the major powers in regard to this conflict seems largely unchanged. <laughs> 